डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी वेलकम फ्रेंड्स वॉम वेलकम इन टूडेज सेशन टूडे फॉर द पर्टिकुलर कोर्स साइबर सिक्योरिटी टूल्स टेक्निक्स एंड काउंटर मेजर इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस रिगार्डिंग साइबर सिक्योरिटी फ्रेमवर्क आई एम डॉक्टर अजय पटेल वर्किंग एज एन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर गणपत यूनिवर्सिटी in this session we will discuss regarding the cyber security measures and cyber security framework uh okay friend so if we discuss uh if we look at our uh, today's learning plan or today's session outline that means uh first of all we are going to discuss regarding the cyber security policy after that uh, we will discuss the cyber security regulation and we will also cover the cyber security policy framework so <coughs> if uh, we look closely regarding the learning outcome so first of all we will discuss regarding the cyber security policy and framework and what is the framework or what is the importance of framework after that uh, we will discuss the compliance or the regulatory framework or regulatory system available uh, in our country as well as in some other countries and after that finally we will discuss uh, regarding the component of the framework so we will learn about the cyber security related framework compliances and regulatory mechanism so first of all friend what is the policy uh because actually the cyber uh, security from framework is completely depend upon the po cyber security policy so first of all uh we need to understand what is the policy so policy is a draft of the organization which contains organization's future vision for the particular domain or for the particular segment for example if any organization is preparing the policy for the expansion that means this policy contains the detailing about the organization's expansion related set of action along with the measurable outcome so this is the policy same as far as concern with the cyber security policy cyber security policy for the business organization is to protect their asset and information system and it also ensure about the legal and re regulatory requirements so in other word if we look closely the cyber security is a draft cyber security policy is a draft uh, for the particular organization in which it can completely describes the organization vision to protect its cyber resources like it infrastructure software and other it assets as well as the information or data stored uh, through the generated or uh, we can say derived from the business processes and it also ensures the protection of interest of organizations various stakeholder like its consumer its uh, supplier or its associate apart from that cyber security policy also emphasizes on the regulatory and legal compliance 
so we in other word we can say the cyber security policy con contains the complete detail regarding the organizations protect plan of their asset it infrastructure and cyber space now uh while we are discussing it is a com complete document or it contains the complete information regarding organization cyber security policy so we need to understand that it's not an overnight effort cyber to derive the cyber security policy or to implement the cyber security policy isn't an overnight effort it to implement or to enforce the cyber security policy in a particular organization is a very systematic approach and it requires various level of micro planning like from the uh, if any organization management wants to implement cyber security policy in organization at that time the initial point the first first task is research and planning so the management people needs to go through the detail research rigorous research and planning about the policy implementation after that the policy defines policy defines in that sense how the organization implement the policy how it affects the is existing business function if any business process reengineering is there or not all this kind of details are being covered by the management in the cyber security policy after that because until unless uh, all the employees and all the stakeholder uh accept it without their acceptance it's not possible to effectively implement the policy so it's a 360 degree approach so uh, uh in a second stage organization management needs to educate the employee after that to train the employee and finally implementation uh is done even after the implementation review revision there are several phases are there so this is the cyber security policy and for the framework for the cyber security framework the cyber security policy is very important now uh the cyber security regulation in india so regulation that means the mechanism or the set of specification which provide certain guideline to organization or to individual how to deal with the cyber related issues or how uh to form some preventative measures to deal with certain kind of cyber security related challenges so uh government of india under the ministry of uh information technology and department of electronics uh designated a nodal agency and they also uh define the policy national cyber security policy which came into existence 2013 and the milestone uh in this regard we can say indian it act 2000 uh we in other word we also pronounce it as a cyber law in india and in a same line in a 2008 the it act amendment so indian it act and indian it act amendment uh both these are the law which is applicable in india for to deal with the cyber crime or any organization who is having the cyber resources needs to follow the indian it act 2000 and indian it act amendment 
So, Indian IT Act covers the very large spectrum like uh, we can say large spectrum in the sense uh, it also provides the mechanism or it uh, defines the various kind of crimes which uh, fall under the cyber crime. It also provides some guideline uh, regarding the digital signature. Indian IT Act amendment provides the clear cut difference between digital signature and electronic signature. It also uh, uh, guides regarding the uh, grievances redressal mechanism. Uh, competitor, it also empowers some authorities to deal for the particular issues. So, this is the complete draft which provides the guideline to citizen as well as business regarding the cyber crime. Apart from that, uh, as part of national, national cyber security policy, government of India had formed CERTIN. CRTIN that means Indian Computer Emergency Response Team, a body which is designated to predict the upcoming challenges, define some proactive steps, provide some emergency response after the cyber attack and after that. Uh, this organization is also supposed to deal with some recovery mechanism after the cyber attack. So, this is the body who is responsible to deal with the cyber emergency, cyber security emergency related situation. And the most important thing because uh, as well as whenever we are discussing the huge growth of the digital platform or wide acceptance, wide acceptance of digital platform for the finance and banking industry. Nowadays, we can see the tremendous rise in a digital transaction. Either it may be a e-commerce or it may be a online banking or it may be some uh, online uh, service consumption. So, during all these business processes, the financial transactions are very important and whenever, whenever the cyber security related financial uh, disputes arise at that time, Reserve Bank of India, Reserve Bank of India, the final authority. Uh, in field of financial is the Reserve Bank of India and this RBI has issued the cyber security guideline and which is mandatory for each and every financial institute. So, to comply the RBI sec cyber security related uh, compliances are compulsory for the business house or financial institution those who are dealing with their customer through the cyberspace. Now, if we look closely, the RBI says that the IT security policy is completely different for any organization than the cyber security policy of the organization. So, in a RBI guideline regarding the cyber security policy, RBI clearly, Reserve Bank of India clearly define certain steps which are required to follow. So, the first step is the current state assessment according to the RBI cyber security framework. Now, what is the current state assessment or which are the steps required to follow for the current state assessment? So, for the current state assessment, any organization needs to identify their existing situation. They have to 
study in detail regarding their existing situation in terms of in terms of cyber security or cyber attack so for example if a particular bank is there and they are having the mobile banking facility online banking facility at that time and they are also uh, core banking solution enabled at that time they have to identify or they have to assess their current uh, IT resources in terms of cyber security or cyber attack. So, they need to uh, find out the possible breaches or the possible threat is, threats which might affect the organization IT infrastructure. So, in other word we can say the current state assessment is very important for any organization to find out their current position or current situation to deal with the any unexpected cyber challenges. After that the most important or the second stage is drafting of policies, procedure and implementation of cyber security control. Now, uh, in this phase, the particular finance or uh, particular financial business house needs to define the policy for the cyber security. After that, they are also required to define the procedures or to need to revise their procedure which uh, can meet or which can fulfill the clauses or conditions mentioned into the policy of the cyber security. Now, after defining the procedure that means after defining one to one action the implementation phase comes during the implementation the management needs to ensure that each and every each and every procedure is implemented successfully to cope up the cyber security policy even after the implementation the 24 by 7 continuous monitoring is compulsory for any any organization so the implementation and management cyber security operation cell. So, in that case the de designated team is to responsible to observe each and every minute to minute ongoing activity of the business house through the digital platform. So, they need to observe incoming traffic, they need to observe the financial transaction, they also need to observe the particular employees or customers uh, behavior uh, on a digital platform. So, these are the steps which are required uh, under the implementation and management. Now, uh, after that the readiness check audit to make sure that RBI cyber security framework has been implemented and this is the audit mechanism or the readiness check. So, once the policy is implemented and the entire business starts functioning according to the cyber security policy, the audit mechanism is equally important for the bank according to the RBI guideline because during audit there are various parameters have been defined and each and every finance house needs to go through the audit and they have to find out their existing situation or their existing position according to the defined parameter it is also called the audit. So, this is the 
policy now national cyber security policy 2013 as we discuss it is the policy which is defined by the government now government of india has also implemented the indian it act and they later on they amended the indian it act and provide the indian it act amendment 2000 during 2008-9 apart from that government of india is also issued national cyber security policy during 2013 and the national cyber security policy is a vision or is a road map for the citizen or for the business house of uh, india which indicates the government vision or government uh we can say government's plan to cope up with the cyber security related challenges so the first uh, in a national cyber security policy if we uh, closely look the main main points of the national cyber security policy so first of all first of all the government in a policy 2013 government complete clear and cut mentioned that they are going to set up national critical information in infrastructure protection center so this is the organization which provides which provides the protection of any government infrastructure in terms of uh, cyber attack so to set up particular organization or uh, here we can say the national critical infrastructure information infrastructure protection center so this is the center which is designated to provide safety or to protect the government's critical infrastructure against the cyber threat or cyber attacks after that because uh, when we are discussing the huge growth of the digital and we are witnessing the huge growth of the digital platforms or acceptance of the digital transaction among the common man or among the citizen of india now it is quite obvious that this tremendous growth also attract some vulnerabilities or attract the hackers those who are intended for the malicious activity so to cope up with, with this kind of situation and to protect to protect or to provide the protection against the hacker or malicious activities government has also announced that they will prepare the skillful task force those who can deal and who will fight against the cyber crime and will protect the cyber infrastructure in the country so this is the task force creation after that the most important scheme scheme for the it infrastructure upgradation now because in india the it use of the it in a business had started from the 1990 to 2000 so it was the decade from where indian business house started adopting the it infrastructure for their business now all these because these are the quite older infrastructure so their vulnerability or their technical weakness are already exploited so any intruder can easily penetrate this kind of infrastructure so government decide and announce that they will hand hold the organization and will provide some uh, financial benefit and some other encouragement also so the existing the organizations existing infrastructure can be upgraded 
then after as we discuss the designation of the certain emergency response center now this body is empowered to deal with the cyber related challenges in a country after that another thing is the use of open standard for the cyber security now there are various standards various standards which are available and uh, for the particular business to business it may vary so there are lots of open standards are available and uh, during the national cyber security policy government also announced that organizations will be insisted to accept adopt the open security standards so now this is the cyber security regulation in india but if we look uh, at a world level so there are certain some another standards are also there and the this country are using this standard like for the european union european union so european parliament had accepted and had approved the european union agency for the network and information security again the european general data protection to provide the security or to maintain the privacy of data uh, this regulation is important now uh, in a same line because uh, while we are discussing the open standard the hipaa compliance hipaa compliance uh, the is the acronym of health insurance portability and accountability act now hipaa was actually enacted in 1996 by the us government and the main objective for the hipaa was to provide the insurance cover for the person those who have left the job so the main objective or the main intention was to provide the portability for the uh, employees insurance or uh, we can say to provide the later on it is also incorporated that uh, to protect the individuals electronic pulse person uh, personal health information and uh, in a hipaa lots of penalty provisions are that so the huge penalty like 1.5 million uh, penalty related provisions are there in a hipaa compliance now so uh, what is considered protected health information this is the most important thing so we can say the patient name address date of birth social security number in our country we can say aadhar card number or individuals physical and mental health condition and uh, the treatment history information concerning the payment for the care provided to individual that identifies the patient or information for which there is a reasonable basis to believe could be used to identify the patient so this kind of the information apart from the personal information treatment related information are also important under the hipaa compliance and none of the organization who is having this kind of de uh, detail can disclose this information without the written consent of the patient uh, and if we look closely in the hipaa then hipaa contains the five different section uh, the first title 1 hipaa insurance reform second hipaa administrative simplification third tax related health provision and title 5 revenue offset so as far as concern with the cyber security for us the title 2 hipaa administrative simplification is very important because as we know as we know uh the portability is there so whenever one organization is providing or transferring patient's information to another organization at that time the simplification is also important 
and it should not be cost of the privacy of individual. Again, the next standard, ISO standard. So, ISMS family of the standard, or uh, in other words, we can say ISO 27K series, and this is specifically, specifically for the uh, any organization while they are dealing with the IT resources or IT infrastructure. So, it is the information security standard and it is published jointly by the international organization for the standardization and uh, international electro techno technical commission. So, uh, we can say uh, let us sum up our uh, today's uh, session discussion in that we discuss regarding the cyber security policy. Cyber security policy is nothing but the uh, blueprint or roadmap for the any business house uh, in uh, terms of to protect their cyber space or their IT resources. After that, the, we also discuss the regulatory mechanism in our country as well as in the for the European Union. And uh, we have also discussed about the HIPAA compliance and ISO standard. Okay, friend, hope this session is fruitful for you. Thank you very much. So,